Hey guys, my name is Adam LZ, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a belt out of a BMX tire. People literally ask me about mine all the time, and I just think it's a cool way to kind of like show that you're a BMX rider, and the fact that you can like use a tire that you've already ridden before, I think is pretty cool. There are actually quite a few articles online about how to make a tire belt, how to make a belt out of a bicycle tire, etc. But the cool thing about the ones that I make that I'm going to show you is that they're fully adjustable. So literally any size you want, you can make it. A lot of them have like preset holes that you like put in and then you have to like put that little like annoying notch belt buckle thing in. This one's for all size, shapes, people's, colors, anything you can imagine. Kind of funny, tire belts were actually one of the first products that I sold in my online store about like two or three years ago. It was sick because like I made a decent amount of profit for every tire belt that I sold, but it's actually quite a bit of work to cut up a tire to make a belt out of it. And my fingers were literally all blistered and I just could not keep up with the demand. So instead of selling tire belts again, I want to show you guys how to make them so you can make your own and you can sell them if you want to, whatever you want to do, but make your own because it's more fun. All right, so let's figure out what you guys are going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a tire. Don't use a new tire because it's going to be too thick to fit through your belt buckle holes. Try to use one that you've ridden that's worn down that's pretty bare. It'll be much easier to cut through and it's just gonna be so much easier. Use a bald tire, don't use a new tire, don't waste a tire. Use a tire with a cool story. This, the tire belt that I've been wearing forever was from my 2012 street edit when I like 180'd over this barrier and got like a double flat and like split my tire in half. So it's pretty sweet. You're also gonna need some scissors. Definitely make sure they're sharp ones because cutting through tire, it's really, really, really tough. So having a nice pair of comfortable scissors that are really, 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 really sharp will make this super easy. Also, shout out to Jake Zorn slash Jimmy Oaks because they're the ones like years and years and years ago who initially gave me the idea to start doing this. Love you guys. Last but not least, you're gonna need a belt buckle. My personal favorite type is the type that you can just like clasp and you can adjust the belt wherever you want. Um, you have a couple different options. You can go to a store and you can buy a belt that already has the buckle on it, which will probably run you maybe around like 15 bucks for a decent one. Or you can buy one of my belt buckles that I'm selling for only $10. This whole video isn't an advertisement. I don't really care if you get a belt buckle from your mom's belt, from your dad's belt, from your brother's belt, from Walmart. I don't care if you steal it. Don't steal it. But anyway, I actually ordered these belt buckles months and months ago, but I didn't want to release them because I wanted to make this video and I wanted to wear one for a long time just to make sure everything held up. My belt buckles are an inch and a half wide, so you can like fit a pretty wide tire in there. A lot of the ones that you'll get aren't going to be really that good. And it has one of my original LZBMX logos in it too, which I'm pretty stoked about, like imprinted into the metal. I'm stoked on the outcome of these, and I think you guys will be too. So the first step, of course, is to cut the tire. But there are certain tires that are easier than others. Ones that have like little ridges that you can kind of cut the scissors in will make it much easier. Um, and then the thinner tires will make it easier, but just try to use those guides or use little like notches in the tire to keep your line straight because it'll come out much better. I'm going to be making two tire belts today just because I don't have a second camera, so I'm going to use one for a second angle. But the first one I'm going to do is an old Sunday tire that I wrote a little bit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is start the hole in the center. So we're just going to pinch the tire and we're just going to cut. You'll feel right away that your hands are going to be killing by the time you're done with this tire. All right, now that you got that done, what I recommend to do that makes it the easiest is Cut all the way around the sidewall because the sidewall is where the tire's thinnest, just so you don't have a steel bead that you're like fighting against. I know some people say they've used razor blades before, but I don't recommend it, and I think I would just kill myself if I use a razor blade. One bead done. Taking the second bead off is way easier. You can kind of just like run the scissors through it, and it just cuts easier because I don't know, you're just arguing against less. I'm making such a mess of Nicole's kitchen. This is my girlfriend's house, by the way. Now you got this long snake looking piece of rubber that you can cut your actual belt out of. You can kind of offset your belt a little bit, which is what I did with this one. It's hard to tell, but it kind of curls a little bit. That'll work. It'll just be a little bit more difficult to slide in your notches. So I do recommend cutting it in the center. On the typical pair of pants, your belt holes are about an inch and a half wide and that's how wide the belt buckle is. But I recommend probably about an inch and a quarter. So if you get a ruler, you can measure about an inch of a quarter and see where that's at at your belt. I always recommend doing it bigger first because you can always take it off if you need to. There's some tread patterns in here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at them and I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to take half of this little line off on each side just so I can know that I'm symmetrical the whole way. You'll notice that tire wasn't meant to be cut. Um, I kind of drape it over the edge of a counter and it makes it easier to slice through. You got to remember, I've probably done like 30 of these things. So I guess you could say I'm an expert because I don't know anyone else that's done this many. You can try to beat me. You can, you can do it if you want. That mine's gonna come out super wavy, but you know it's okay because then it just shows that I made it. Because sometimes mine are so good that people think that I ordered it online. No, I made it. 
discard the scrap and move on to the other's half. Your fingers are probably starting to hurt about now, but it's going to be worth it because you only have to do one. You don't have to do 30. You only have to do one. When you're doing your second one, you can kind of see if you like cut it too small or too big. I think mine's going to be a little bit too small, but it's okay because I have two tires. Just try to take your time and be patient. I'm not a very patient person, so I've ruined many tires doing this. Yet again, like I said, make sure your tire is thin because if it's thick, it's going to be super, super hard to get through your pants. This tire was super worn out and it was a thin tire to start with, so it's going to work great. Next thing you can do is just kind of look at the tire, see if you're like edgy anywhere, and you can just kind of smooth out the cuts. I like to enjoy whipping people with the belt before I actually finish it because it really hurts. It's just like, wow. Take the belt, measure it around your waist, bring it around so you have enough that you can go like past where your belt would be and like maybe two buckles past it and then cut it there. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger because I think I'm gonna end up giving this away or something on Instagram or maybe in the YouTube comments. You can always cut it longer and you can always cut it down later. But what I do, I like to, instead of just leaving a nasty looking square end, I'll just kind of round it off just to make it look pretty. We're, we're saving the environment right now, guys. You should be stoked. All right, not perfect, but it's a little nub now. So now is when your tire actually becomes a belt. If you order one of my belt buckles, it'll be really easy because I actually designed these buckles just for tire belts. So what you want to do is make sure you have a nice square edge that the buckle will be able to grab onto. Take the buckle, make sure it's straight and centered, feed the belt in. So what you want to do is you want to have a little bit less than a centimeter, kind of depending on the thickness of your belt hangover, slide it in and then push those spikes down real hard. It's just going to fold right over the belt. It's not going to close completely. The metal won't touch the metal, but the spikes are super, super strong. So it'll grab. If you have a thicker belt, you might have to kind of like push it and work the teeth in to get that clasp to fully close. Try it on, make sure it fits. Th this is when you're going to experience the thing that I deal with every morning, and that's having a belt that doesn't like to go through your belt holes because rubber does not like denim. You just close it right in, feed it through your belt hole, and you're all set. Remember, if it's too long, like I got this big like nub thing hanging out, you can trim it down a little bit. I normally leave like a couple inches extra just in case, you know, I gain some weight because I like my tire belts. One thing I do think I should note, just in case you guys aren't used to wearing these type of belts, it is very easy to get your shirt stuck in it when you're closing it. So be careful because I've put a lot of holes in my shirts for not paying attention and being in a rush. Once again, my buckles are made like exactly for this. So if you want to save the headache of trying to find one or anything and you want to help me out for making this video, you can order one. There'll be like a link above my head or on the corner. I don't know how YouTube works these days. I outsource all my editing. Just kidding. I edit all my own stuff. Don't like call me out or anything. It's a very time consuming process, but I like doing it. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching. It's a really fun thing to do. If you make a sick one, upload it to Instagram with hashtag LZBMX. It's a really, really simple thing that you can do, but this video is nothing less. It's just to give you the idea or the inspiration to go out and you know, get creative because it's a cool thing you can do. I'm going to give away these two tire belts that I have that I just made for this video because I have nothing to do with them. And instead of rewarding you guys for like making funny comments and making fun of me in the video, because I, I, you know, as much as I like that, I want to switch it up a little bit. How about whoever gives the next best creative idea of like just something that you guys can do in your free time in the comment section, um, two, two of you I'll pick. I'll send you guys tire belts because uh, then you guys, while you're scrolling through the comments, maybe you'll get some other cool ideas of stuff you can do that's not riding because I know a lot of people like me, you get injured and then you don't have anything to do and you still want to kind of be involved with BMX. So whether it's painting a bike or, you know, making a belt out of a tire, it's just cool to stay involved in the sport that we all love. So thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it if you pick up one of the sweet LZB Mix belt buckles. If not, I understand. But um, subscribe, comment. I make lots of videos and hopefully I'll be making more how twos lately because I really enjoy this. Thanks guys. Today we're going to teach you guys how to do a manual. Alright, so one of the first things you guys want to know is how to get comfortable flipping back. Because if you don't know how to flip back, <laughs> you dip your knees in and then just ease it back nice and easy. And make sure your arms are straight. Sit over your seat.